Hey, welcome back to my chaos, everybody. Uh, in this video, we're gonna get this wing skin wrapped up and maybe even start on the spar, so stick around and see what's going on. As you can see here, I'm fitting the foam core um, that makes the inner ply of the sandwich panel for the wing skin. And uh, you may have heard me in an earlier video say that I was having trouble getting eight foot long um, foam, but eventually RevChem came through for me and I've got several four by eight sheets there. And uh, they were even nice enough to deliver it, so that made this thing a whole lot easier. So I've got the wing core just about all cut and fit. What I have left to do here is the tip. And you can see where I started adding some pieces together here to seam it, but it um, turns out that since I've got the large sheets, I'm gonna remove that whole tip panel in pieces and do it all in one shot. So I've gotta get that done, and then I can start beveling the edges, and then hopefully we can get this glued in. Okay, I got that tip piece fit up. That went real quick. Now, all I have left to do, um, well, I should say the next thing I have to do is sand all the edges to about a 45 degree bevel all the way around. And you can see where I have a seam, I have it marked no bevel. I actually made that mistake on the other skin and beveled one when I didn't mean to. So those don't get beveled. They get buttered up. And then the natural squeeze out from the resin and the cabo that goes underneath it and again, on top, we'll fill that gap. So there's no need to glue those panels together. They just get taped together temporarily when they go in. Um, here's what a, the bevel looks like right here. You can see the 45, so this core is beveled down. And this allows the inner and outer skin to touch each other, and that makes the strongest possible sandwich core. And if we move down here, you can see my mistake here. This is where I beveled it, where I didn't need to. And I caught it before I was finished, so it didn't get the full bevel but you can see that's a little bit of discontinuity there. Now, I wasn't gonna redo that whole piece of core, so I just am gonna deal with that and I will fill that later, but it's really not a strength concern. Um, especially in this wing, the spar takes 100% of the bending loads. The uh, skins are just there for torsion and to keep things smooth. So let me pull these core pieces out of here and I'll get sanding and I'll show you what that looks like. So beveling is pretty easy. I use 40 grit on an automotive long block. Um, these are foam, but they're hard. They're not like a regular flexible foam block. So it stays nice and straight. And I just use the edge of a table sort of as a guide and just long, easy strokes is all it takes. That's it. That's all there is to it. Let's go around the whole thing. Okay, got that all nice and beveled. So this piece is almost ready to go in. Um, let me show you one more thing. I'm gonna flip it over here. And uh, I don't know if this step is really necessary, but it's sort of cheap insurance, but I have this little tool. It's called a woodpecker, and it's actually a model airplane thing. Um, you can see it's this wheel with all these little spikes on it. And what this is for is when you're putting iron on film covering on a model airplane over a fully sheeted surface, you run this over the surface to poke tiny holes to allow the air to escape um, so it doesn't bubble up the covering. So. I use this on the bottoms and the top, actually. Um, I go over the, the core, and this just gives a little more tooth for the resin and micro mixture to kind of bite into. So some people do it, some people don't. Um, for me, it doesn't cost anything but a few minutes worth of work, so kind of peace of mind, I guess. I'll uh, show you how that's done. So pretty simple, I've got the bottom side up here, and I just take this and uh, run it all over and put a bunch of holes in it. the 
camera can pick up the texture or not, um, but there's, you know, now thousands of little holes in here. So that's ready to go in. All right, now all the core is beveled, so that all fits in there nice. I also woodpeckered all the back sides of them. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, take a Sharpie and uh, mark inside the tape. The tape is just here to give me a general idea of where to size the core. It's not exact, the core doesn't have to fit perfectly, although I'm pretty happy this fits really well. And what I'm gonna do is I'll just mark um, around the inside of the tape, pull the tape up, and then I have to clean the skin pretty well. It's been sitting for quite a while, so it's a little dusty, so I'm gonna blow it off, wipe it down with alcohol, and uh, then get ready to bag this stuff in here. And uh, I think my silver Sharpie has dried up, so I'm gonna do it with black, which is not ideal. Silver is what you really should use, but if you're careful, you can look closely and see the black lines there. So I'm gonna pull the core up, mark everything, and then get to cleaning the skin. All right, as expected, my Sharpie did indeed dry up, but black shows up okay. Um, I just have to be careful not to wipe it off of there. And really all this line is for is to just give me a guideline when I'm putting resin down. There's really no need to put resin all the way out to the ends uh, because I'll have to peel apply that and then reprep it for the next bond. So I'll just make sure that I come to the line and a little bit extra and then uh, peel apply just the edges a little bit and then glue the foam down. But uh, right now I'm going to fire up the air compressor, blow all the dust off, give it a good wipe down, clean all the flanges, and then I'll probably put my tacky tape down and then uh, from there, it's going to be time to glue it in. All right, core is all glued down. Uh, so what I did is I rolled in a layer of neat resin first, and then a mixture of about one part resin to one part cabosil, just to thicken up the resin a little bit. That's in there, and I don't know if you saw or not, but when I was rolling the core, I actually cut it, or broke it rather, so I had to piece it together, no big deal. That'll be fine once it bags. But uh, Ryan's going around and putting peel ply around the edges. You can see where the resin's just peeking outside from underneath the core. So the peel ply just keeps the bag from sticking. So we're gonna do that around the whole thing and then uh, put it under vacuum and wait. Okay, all the peel ply's down covering up the edges. Now we're gonna pull uh, batting over as a breather and then it's bag time. All right, all in the bag there. Ryan's gonna turn on the vacuum and uh, we're gonna let it pull down and check for leaks. I know there's this, my vacuum hose is pretty stiff here. It's just a air compressor hose for this particular one. So I know it's trying to lift right here. So that's gonna be potentially a leak, but um, Ryan's gonna go around and hit it with a roller and we're just gonna walk around and see what happens. So I'll be back once it's pulled down. All right, there it is all pulled down. Um, I don't know if you saw from the time lapse, we had to fight a couple leaks, which is honestly pretty normal. Um, where the green tape is there, there was a little hole in the bag from where the dry laminate cut the bag. I should have run a breather over there, but I didn't. And then um, the actual weight of my vacuum hose, again, this is just air compressor line. And I have my vacuum pump outside because I don't want to listen to it all day. So the line just barely makes it. And I wanted the line to rest on the part of the laminate that's gonna get cut out so it won't print through. I didn't want it to crush the core. So the actual weight of the hose, it was lifting up right there. So just a little bar clamp, just to hold the hose down. I'm not pinching the line off, just enough to keep it from trying to lift. And that cured it. So you can see all down nice and tight. And uh, now we're gonna clean the disaster of a shop and let it sit for about eight hours and then we can start the inner laminates. 
All right, that core all came out good. Um, Ryan is woodpeckering it now. Uh, we've got all of the carbon for the inner layers cut and we're gonna start putting it together here real soon. All right, all the carbon is down and Ryan's rolling out the peel ply. I didn't bother recording putting the carbon on because it's boring. I mean, it seems like that's all this whole channel has been is wetting out carbon. <laughs> I'm ready to start building airplanes. So anyway, uh, this is going down. We'll put a breather over it, get it under vacuum, and then this wing skin will be done. All right, there it is down under vacuum, and it all looks really nice. Everything went down nice and tight. The, um, all the hinge lines look good. All the edges look good. Everything is down, so now we just let it cook. All right, so with that upper skin complete, today's mission is we're going to start on the spar. So these are the spar tools, uh, left and right C channels, and um, obviously they don't fit on... My makeshift table here so i'm gonna go buy some wood and build i think about an 18 foot long two foot wide table to put basically right here and i'm gonna build the spar on that so uh let's get going all right so what's happening here is uh obviously i've rearranged a little bit but starting to build a spar table um i just gotta flip it over and add some reinforcements but i plan to leave them on these saw horses here uh, and I'll shim it level, and then the spar molds themselves will actually get screwed down to the top of this table, too. So it should be nice and stiff. And then I'll obviously use my laser to get it all nice and straight. But the reason I've kind of got it angled like this, let me back up back here so you guys can see. As you can see, it's kind of pointed out the door there. And uh, again, this is the challenge of working in a small, small shop space. Um, the reason it's pointed this way is because that's my roll of protrusions, which will be the spar cap. So I've got some metal to weld up a stand and then that's gonna eventually gonna go right here. And then I will be able to feed the protrusions through the door. Uh, my chop saw will sit right here at the end of the spar table and I'll be able to cut and feed them directly into the spar. So that's what's happening. All right, so I've got the molds up there. So this essentially is the idea. Um, Nothing's sitting up there permanently. In fact, I've got to shim uh, that in just a little bit because I don't know if you can see there's a little bit of a gap there, but I just want to make sure that my math worked out right. And um, the sizing looks good. I plan to bag the spar uh, directly to the table. So I need to come through here and seal up all the gaps in between um, before I mount the spar molds down permanently to the table. Well, not permanently, I'm just going to screw them down, but. Uh, so I think I'm going to do that next, and then I can start uh, fixturing the spar level and then fixturing the molds in the correct orientation so all the seams are tight, dihedral angle is correct, all that kind of stuff. And then, well, I guess we can start building it. Okay, I've gone around and just used the packing tape uh, over the seams here. I intend to bag down to the table, so I want that to be airtight. So I've done this before with some other layups that I've done, it seemed to work out fine. So hopefully that'll work out the same here. And uh, I've also gone around and um, shimmed where I needed to. And so basically I'm just using uh, door and window shims that you would use as a you know, square up and opening. And then once I've got it where I want it, I've locked it down with a screw to the sawhorse there. So the bench is level and it is mounted to the sawhorses. Let me uh, shut off the light here. I know it's probably really tough to see here, but I've got the laser line touching the very edge all the way down. So that's how I know the table is straight. So from there, I'm gonna turn the light back on. I'll show you what I'm doing next. All right, so I've got my overhead shop lights off and just one light on on my bench there. Now my spar tools are made out of MDF and anybody who's ever built anything out of MDF knows that they're not dimensionally stable. So just like anything else, my spar tool uh, migrated a little bit when it was sitting here in my shop, so it actually had spread apart. Now, when we did the spar tooling, I made sure that the split line down the middle, over here, you can see these aren't apart, the split line here is dead straight. So now all I have to do is run the laser down it, which you can see right now I've got it clamped together, and the laser line is, well, let me see if I can get it here. 
it's dead on. So I know that this half of the spar is perfectly straight. So I'm gonna screw that down right there and then we'll set the other side. And I've got two things to check on the other side. Okay, this is all screwed down now. I went about every, every 12 inches or so all the way down both sides. And as you can see, we are still dead nuts straight down the center. So awesome. Let's get that side set up. All right, other side is screwed and clamped. Well, I guess clamped and then screwed in place. And same deal, you can see nice straight line right down the center. So now what I have to do is take a measurement between each tips in the center to make sure that I have my dihedral right. All right, so what I've done now is set the laser up so it just touches the tip of the spar at both ends. And so I'm gonna measure the height in the middle. And that's gonna tell me what my dihedral is. Now I've already measured this, so I already know what it is, but uh, it's right on the money at two inches, which is where it's supposed to be. So from this point forward, the spar is fixtured in place and it can't move. So, well, I guess we start building it now. So I've covered the entire mold with packing tape. Um, this is a cheap, easy, reliable mold surface um, that will definitely release and um, since this is not a cosmetic part, I really don't care about the surface finish too much. So what I'm really concerned with is, um, you know, getting the spar built and getting it out of here. So I've got one coat of wax on this side, no, on that side yet. And uh, it's just about ready to buff off. So I've let it sit for a couple of minutes and I'm just gonna start buffing it off here. And, uh, once I do the whole thing, I'll probably wait 20, 30 minutes maybe, and then I'll put another coat of wax on. And I'll do that four times, I guess. And then uh, PVA, and we'll be ready to start making it. All right, four coats of wax on, polished. And I just put down a generous layer of PVA, and um, no need to spray it on this one. I actually use a breather. It absorbs the PVA, holds quite a bit, and I just kind of pour it in, slop it around, and make sure it's in there nice and smooth. Um, very generous coat. And again, I'm um, not looking for a beautiful surface finish on this. So uh, that's the only reason I would spray it. So this needs to cure for maybe an hour. And then uh, I'm going to start dragging in peel ply. So peel ply goes in first because that's the layer that is going to bond, actually the surface that's going to bond um, to the upper and lower skin. So I want a nice bondable surface. So peel ply first and then two layers of carbon uh, on the 4545. And that's what we're gonna try to accomplish today. All right, peel ply is all in, and uh, that all laid down real nice. And I'm using 3M71, which is dissolvable and epoxy, so it just takes a light mist to kind of hold it in place. And now we're gonna start dragging carbon in. Carbon's going in the mold now. And uh, it's going in here dry with just a little bit of uh, spray glue to hold it in place. And then eventually it will get infused when everything gets in here. So almost done. Okay, all the face plies are in. So the next step is to infuse this. And then we can start putting in the uh, foam core and the hard points for the landing gear. But we're going to stop this episode right here. So thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. And next episode, we'll hopefully see this spar finished. All right. See ya.